Hello, and thanks for checking out ChartGuys.com. We're proud to be one of the most successful technical analysis communities online, teaching you the skills to become a more confident, effective, and informed trader. Join our community of hundreds of analysts worldwide working together to learn the charts, generate profit, and achieve financial independence. For access to daily live chart analysis and market coverage, a thriving chat community, along with dozens of hours of exclusive educational materials. We look forward to seeing you. Let's check out some charts. Checking in on the MJ space. So we've got some earnings this week coming up, a whole bunch of them. We've got VFF in labs today after hours. Tomorrow, I think, is TRUL. Wednesday, CGC. Actually, I think Wednesday is CGC, TRUL. Either way, you need to be on top of it if you're on individual names. This week, we've got a, a solid dozen earnings to come out. So we got a little bit of bullish action at the end of the day out of some individual names. We can see CGC was a daily inside bar, but it closed at the high of the day. I'm not expecting anything out of CGC notable on the chart, on the daily chart, until we get an earnings reaction Wednesday after hours. If it's a bullish reaction, we're looking up at the resistances in the 36s. If it's a bearish reaction, we're looking down at the low of 3075. So short-term resistance heading into earnings 3333 if that level can break bulls will have some slight momentum at their backs keep in mind the market remembers our first two earnings reactions out of significant names APHA and Cron both had bullish reactions both have since sold off significantly from those bullish reactions market knows that so we may see a little bit of bullish action leading into earnings if we see a bullish reaction to earnings we're going to be watching how much profit taking and how much selling pressure results from that. So short term, 33.33 key resistance. Cron, double bottom, nice bottom fishing play today. And not a double bottom, but 12.70 was the level. We bounced off 12.79, so held support by 9 cents. And at this point, we have bounced a solid 46 cents from that level. So we have our low, high of the earnings reaction, higher low, and we will be looking for a daily lower high to be set. If bulls can break 1326, we'll be looking at some follow through tomorrow. The hourly trend has changed. And there's some bullish action after hours as well. So the question now is how much follow through can the bulls see? 1349 and then $14 are our short term resistances. And we're just going to be looking for this range to tighten up with a daily lower high being set. ACB and APHA. So at about 2 p.m. Eastern, I was able to say, Based on the hourly time frame, the bulls are attempting to change their hourly trend and give us the daily higher low. When we're looking for daily higher lows, we're looking for hourly trend changes to indicate that. We had a scenario where the bulls had an hourly higher low forming this afternoon, and in order to confirm that, we had to close strong. The bulls came out and they closed strong. ACB with the hourly higher low at 638, bull break at 648, closed strong, the hourly trend change gives us the daily higher low. So at this point, we have the low of the dump, high of the bullish reaction to news, higher low is set, and now we're looking for a lower high compared to 720. So again, have to change the daily trend for bulls to prove anything to us. It's not going to happen anytime soon, but we have formed that higher low. The gap to fill was 626. We dropped down to 628, missed filling it by two pennies or actually by one penny, but Bulls bought that dip. Tightening daily range anticipated. APHA, same thing. Hourly time frame gave us the higher low in the afternoon, followed through to break resistance of 655 at the end of the day. Not convincing, but the bulls will take it. So the hourly trend change tells us the daily higher low is likely. We have our low, high of the bull move, higher low is 621. Anything under 760 is just a lower high. Bulls have a lot of proving to do, and it's going to completely deflate all bullish momentum if we bounce and then roll over. For both ACB and APHA and Cron and CGC and anybody, if we cannot change the daily trends, bulls prove nothing. Anticipating best case scenario for bulls on ACB and APHA is a couple days of follow through and a tightening daily range into next week. TLRY, higher low has formed, anything above 41.22, kept the uptrend intact. We held support by 32 cents and bounced. If we're going to see follow through, we have to break 44.65, trying to form this weekly higher low, not convincing at this point. 
If we break 44.65, it will be convincing, and we'll then be looking up at 51.03. OGI is still extremely weak, not even worth wasting my breath on. The Bears have complete control. Hexo, keeping up the incremental daily higher lows, closed at the high of the day, so 466 and 475 are short-term resistances. If we break those levels, 494 is the next resistance. Still trying to see the bull cross of these exponential moving averages. And now the most important short-term support is 435. So bulls still holding it together, but still not entirely convincing. In a market, I should say in a sector that's seeing this, this much weakness as we have been seeing, Hexo bulls will certainly take it at this point. So T- CTST talked about how it was the potential of ETF rebalancing for the bull move Friday, gave it all back, bearish news pre-market, dumped down, and even after the bell rang, we were just looking for an hourly lower high to form. Anything under 286 was a lower high. We topped out at 259 and then faded into the afternoon. So support is down at 227 and 218. Daily inside bar form today. Bears still have control overall. Certainly was not a move with any follow through. VFF earnings after hours. No reaction yet. So VFF is a play. I play. I do not play earnings reactions. It's gambling. I'm not a fundamental investor. But I play sometimes leading up to earnings and, of course, after earnings. So how do you play leading up into earnings? I like to look for moves that are overextended in one direction. This was a move that is overextended for the bulls. So we look for two things. If you've gone up, I mean, from the close on, let's just say from the low of Wednesday to the high of today, we were up 20%. And that's not even including the big bull move where we are up huge over the last month. So in the last month, we are up, or we were up 58% in one month and 20% in three days. So if you are that extended, think of the psychology of the market. If I'm a bull in that position, I'm going to be locking in profit. Why risk gambling on what earnings may potentially be when I'm staring profit in the face and I can click a button and put that profit in my account? So bulls look to take profit when we're overextended and bears look to jump in knowing things are overextended. Likewise, if we are dumping into earnings, I look for bears to take profit and I look for bulls to buy it as a discount in their perception heading into that earning report. So this morning, as the bulls were heading to higher highs, it was easy to say, keep an eye out for a bearish entry on VFF. We're going to look for profit taking today before the end of the day. And we ended up seeing a top set, a significant pullback between the high of the day and the low consolidation. We pulled back four or 5%. And as a bear, I'm certainly looking to take my profit as a day trade because I'm not gonna risk it heading into earnings when we could see any kind of reaction in either direction. Again, it's just gambling in that regard as to we have no idea what the reaction is going to be. So if you're staring at profit, I personally will lock in that profit. And a lot of the market is the same way, which is why we can look in the opposing direction when things are overextended heading into earnings. If it's a bullish reaction to earnings, we'll still be cautious of profit taking. But 1836 and 1911 are short-term resistances. If it's a bearish reaction to earnings, anything above 1522 keeps the daily uptrend intact. So we could see a bearish reaction, and this is why bulls are fairly comfortable, because we could see a bearish reaction and a 10% drop and still be in a daily uptrend. So VFF bulls continue to stand out as lead Canadian MJ bulls in this market. T God bulls, nice follow through, daily bull flag confirmed. Earnings, again, I believe are Wednesday, could be tomorrow, double check. Anything above 327 is a higher low. And the next resistance level after 360 is 367. Bulls still riding on the momentum of filing for an uplisting. And now we'll see what earnings gives us. Bearish reaction. And we'll look to top out and have to set a weekly higher low. And with a bullish reaction, we're going to be looking up at 377 and 4 psychological. And Labs has earnings as well. Daily inside bar. I believe they turned to profit. Haven't read the earnings and I'm not going to. But daily inside bar. If it breaks 657, daily consolidation will be underway for a higher low. And if we break 717 and 728, 
We're looking at the all-time high of 739. So now heading to the USMJ sector, where we're continuing to see weakness. And in a recent video, maybe sometime in the last week, I talked about how a scenario where we're going to have to lose daily uptrends to set weekly higher lows. And if we're going to see weekly trend changes, we know we need a weekly higher low and higher high. And it's going to be really difficult for bulls to have conviction to hold through a loss of the daily uptrend to look for a weekly higher low to be set. We're in a scenario right now where for a, no a number of names that look really weak, they could be forming their weekly higher low. The odds do not favor it. In order for that to be the case, and I'll show examples, we're going to have to see the stars align to a certain degree. And the stars aligning means individual names that have earnings with bullish reaction, bullish reaction to other major names like CGC and other names in the sector that do have earnings this week, and the S&P 500 changing the daily trend back to the bulls and looking back at the all-time high. If those things happen, then we can absolutely change some weekly trends in this sector. But again, it's going to take a lot and the odds favor the bears right now. So just a rough example of what I mean. Kiraleaf has fallen and dumped the last five days in a row. We have lost daily support. We're not seeing high bear volume, but if we look at the weekly time frame, this is exactly what the bulls want to see as far as volume goes. Big bull volume on the bounce, tiny bear volume on the pullback. The one thing that the bulls don't want to see is the size of the pullback that we have seen. So if I look at this price action, I would say bears are comfortable. If you cover the price action and tell me that a weekly bounce took place and just show me the volume, I would say the bulls are comfortable. But that's not the case because of the price action. And price action is more important than what the volume is doing. So this is a scenario where for Cure Relief, if we see the MJ sector continue with some bullish reaction to earnings, the S&P 500 change the daily trend back to the bulls, this is a scenario where we could possibly set a higher low compared to 802 and then head back up towards resistance of 1103. That being said, if we're talking statistical probabilities, we are currently 64 cents from a bear break to a weekly lower low, in which case this would just be a weekly bear flag. And for a bull break, we need $2.40. So we need to cover four times the distance for the bulls that we need for the bears. So that's why the bears are favored. And that's why the scenario that I just laid out for a possible weekly trend change is not the most likely. But again, it is a possibility. So that's something I'm watching for the rest of the week. Pretty much have to see multiple green days in a row for the USMJ sector tomorrow, Wednesday, to keep this possibility alive because bulls are running out of space. When we do bounce on cure relief, we're going to look for a daily lower high to form because anything under 1080 is just a lower high. So if this is going to be a potential possibility, and again, odds do not favor it, but it's possible, we would have to bounce, set a daily lower high, hold the low, change the daily trend, and if that were to happen, then we would zoom out to the weekly and say the weekly trend change is a possibility. So pretty much we have to change the daily trend in order to shift odds for the weekly trend change to be potentially favorable. So a long way to go. It's not in the picture right now, but it's possible. So just want to lay out that scenario. And of course, if we break 802, weekly bear flag confirmed. We have filled this daily gap down to 865 and the bears are still in full control. The hourly time frame is all downtrend. Hourly exponential resistance has rejected the last three bounce attempts. That's going to be in play tomorrow. And the bulls aren't doing anything. So there's other individual names that are looking at the same kind of scenario. Again, IAN, size of the pullback from the daily move bounce, top of the bounce of 431, three days of pullback. We've given back 16%. That's huge. That's way more than the bulls want to give back. And looking at the weekly time frame, the bulls would have to hold 318 and then break 431 to change this weekly trend. Again, it's not likely, but it's a possibility. IAN earnings are in two weeks, I believe. So for IAN, hourly RSI dipping right down towards oversold. Anything under 380 is just an hourly lower high. Bulls trying to defend 363. If we break 380 tomorrow, we'll have shifted the hourly momentum and our daily higher low will be established. And we'll then be looking for a lower high compared to 431. And if we don't change that hourly trend, we're going to be looking down at 351 as the next support 
after 363. C-Web, nice follow through for these bulls. I expect the most likely to scenario is a lower high compared to 3010. We have our high, low of consolidation, which is our daily high or low, and anything under 3010 is just a lower high. So I wouldn't be surprised to see a tightening range form on C-Web through the rest of the week, potentially topping out in the short term, and then we'll look for a higher low. So watching for that tightening range, a scenario where the bulls could look for a break and a test of the all-time high is if we see increasing bull volume. If the bulls show up tomorrow with more than 700,000 shares traded, that's going to shift my perspective and say, well, we could break that 3010 level, but have to show up with that volume to make that a possibility. TRUL weakness continues. 1177, the only support nearby. Short-term bounce, cool off hourly RSI. We closed weak down near the low of the day. Bears still in full control. Earnings are approaching, but after 1177, we are then looking down at 1139, and the bears are continuing to keep full control on this weekly time frame. So the red flag was the daily trend change without any follow through, which just ended up being a weekly lower high. And now we're back down to testing support. OH, red flag was Friday, bull break with no follow through, weakness in the sector. And now we're looking down at 675 as the next support level. Weekly time frame again, it's a possible bear flag, absolutely. The odds favor a bear flag just because of the sector weakness at this point but it's possible to hold 640 and break 775 and to change this daily trend with a little higher low and higher high. So it's possible. Earnings are coming up for OH and CL. Or OH pretty much has already dictated what earnings are to expect. So we'll see if, oh, with, if CL reaction to earnings or the conference call for CL has any impact as to what we're expecting short term. So again, at this point, over the last day or two, I have taken off some of my position in the USMJ sector to lighten the load and limit some risk and ensure that my account stays where it is or near where it is. And at this point, I'm going to be watching very close. I'm giving the bulls a little bit of wiggle room because my positions are now smaller. I can give more wiggle room and I will be continuing to trade the space today. I had an order for... Cure relief on the US side, CURLF. And this is just an example of why the OTC is the Wild West. My order was at 651 for a few thousand shares. We dropped and hit 650. No shares filled of my order. And then we bounced up to 665. So there's the 2% bounce that I was going for just because the 15 minute and hourly RSI were so oversold. But my order never filled. And that's because market makers can fill the orders when and wherever they want. OTC is the Wild West. So bears still have full control. Short-term bull momentum at the end of the day in some of the major Canadian MJ names. VFF and Labs earnings after hours. We'll see how they react tomorrow. Sector eyes are on CGC earnings Wednesday after hours. USMJ fading, giving a lot of the bull move back. And that's where we stand. Bulls have to show up in USMJ to try and defend some recent lows because again, we have to always remind ourselves we absolutely can see another leg down. Any individual name that we're looking at, it is possible we drop to lower lows and we have to be prepared for that. So I appreciate you watching. We'll end it here with a little video clip from a few months ago, maybe a year ago at this point. And we'll check back in tomorrow. Have a good rest of your night. Good morning. One of the ways that I stay one step ahead of the herd is by out hustling them. So every single day I'm waking up before the sun, not by an alarm, but because my body wakes me up because it's pumped to be alive. And it's looking forward to going downstairs and making content first thing. And I love starting the day and setting the intention of the day of being productive by knocking things off my checklist before it's even 8 a.m. It's really easy to have a very productive day when you're already productive before the sun even comes up. So when learning charts and technical analysis, for me, it was never, I need to do this work so I can make money. It was always, I enjoy doing this and money is going to result from it. And those are two very different mindsets to be in. And you have to ensure that your goals are in line with your enjoyment if you're going to be able to do this long-term successfully. So don't forget to do good things out there. Go get productive on the day. We'll see you soon. Shh, hear that? It's Sunday morning and that's the sound of the herd sleeping.